Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Amir Rashad, and like you heard, I'm the CEO of a uh, startup here in Dubai, um, an AI or an artificial intelligence driven e commerce platform. Um, but before I start talking to you about how AI is actually related to something as mundane as grocery shopping, um, I want to tell you a little bit about my own journey uh, in, to discovering AI. Um, so I'm a mom of two teenage sons, and uh, like uh, many moms, I am responsible for grocery shopping in my home. Never, uh, I'm a working mom, so I've never really had time to do uh, everything I want to do, and uh, even if I had, the process of grocery shopping is boring, mundane, repetitive, and you know anybody who's ever done it knows what I'm talking about. Um, there just had to be a better way to do this. I mean, I looked around me and in, you know, 2015 or 16 at the time when I was thinking about this, I was going about this in exactly the same way that my mom had and her mom had, and we were doing exactly the same thing. So I, I really thought, you know what, it's about time that we actually do something about it. So I started researching um, some sort of technology. If it's, if it's that big of a problem, touching you know, that many lives, technology has to have an answer to this. The problem with grocery shopping is that it's like life, it's messy. There are a lot of things that actually impact it. So what you buy, uh, for example, gets affected by the weather, whether we're in school season or not, whether you have guests and so on and so forth, and it's this ever-changing uh, kind of dynamic. Um, when you program technology, you almost have to know what, you know what you're solving, what the problem is and how to solve it in order to program for it because just uh, you know, top, top level uh, logic behind programming, if something is X, then you do Y. You have to literally instruct the computer to do things. Um, but if you don't know what, how to solve the problem or what the issue is, um, it's very difficult for traditional programming to actually solve it technology wise. Um, however, that is not the case with AI. Um, and we'll talk about how, you know, how, how AI is different. Um, the process for AI is, uh, is, is quite different, and I think in order for you to understand it a little bit, I'm going to go through a couple of definitions uh, as to what really is involved in AI. So um, artificial intelligence is this nebulous term that people use. Um, and I want to sort of very zero in on what the definition is. The definition really is, very simply, the concept of teaching a computer to think like we do. So when you think about what we do, what our brains do, uh, we understand, we reason, we plan, uh, we decipher language and, and, and react to it, and so on. Um, the real driver or technology behind that process of teaching a machine or a computer to do what we do um, is machine learning, a technology called machine learning, which essentially is allowing a computer to process streams of data with minimal programming. Uh, so you don't have to know what you're looking for. You could just allow the technology to connect the dots and, cr and, and see and identify patterns and learn from those patterns and then teach itself to learn from new patterns and so on. Um, so all you have to do is define the problem, structure a data uh, infrastructure to capture that, uh, you know, those flows, those, those large amounts of data that we're now able to capture and have the, and sit back and have the machine actually connect the dots and, and, and teach you. This is now possible because of certain developments in technology like processing power, for example, or the ability to store large amounts of data and, and, and so on, which was not commonplace or reachable for most businesses just a couple of years ago. Um, other things that AI is uh, able to kind of avail for most businesses are, for example, you hear terms like um, IoT or the Internet of Things. What is that? That basically is a network of millions of devices connected, learning from their own data streams and sharing this data in order to uh, enable functions across different devices. Um, we're going to talk today about how, for example, your fridge can be an IoT enabled device. Uh, language processing is another natural language processing. So the ability for AI to actually go through language streams and decipher things like sentiment, for example. Uh, is she angry? Is she happy? How do I react? And so on. 
These are just uh, predictive analytics, for example. So looking at historical data, and then using that data, connecting the dots there, to predict things in order to reduce your risk and, and so on and so forth. So enough with the definitions. Um, and let's talk a little bit about how that um, helped me personally. By the way, I have zero technical background. Like literally, I have not studied computer science whatsoever. I'm a business person um, with a problem. I didn't want to do my grocery shopping. Um, and I, uh, I, I just had to get my arms around this new technology and do something with it. So much so, the pain point was so big that I actually started a company to develop the technology to do something about it for me and for um, you know, parents who are like me. Um, so what does all of this help you do, big picture? Um, it actually helps you do several things. One is it helps you understand um, the magnitude of risk that you're actually taking in any given decision, be it in marketing, being in sourcing, be it in whatever else that you're trying to do. Uh, quantify it, prioritize it, and then actually decide to put resources behind it to do something about it. Um, an example would be um, you have a bunch of suppliers who are late. You don't know why they're late. You don't know who's late. You just know there's a problem of some sort. If you program the artificial intelligence to actually collect the data uh, around certain points, for example, accuracy of delivery, or um, out of stock situations with suppliers, or um, the uh, expiry date uh, issues that a particular supplier has. And then it connects the dots. It allows you to see things that you would not have been otherwise able to see. For example, suppliers who are always late seem to have a problem with their uh, expiry dates or whatever it is, uh, something that I didn't know I was looking for in the first place. And in doing so, allows me to make decisions like, you know what? I'm going to have to have about three other backup suppliers for this particular product, or I'm going to buy from supplier B because um, you know, the uh, A and C have a problem of some sort, and so on. You can also do the same thing when it comes to your consumers. So an example would be, um, not all, I'm, I'm sorry to say this, 